Good evening, I'm Sean McKean, and this is the Duke Weekly Roundup. In news this week, features editor Caitlin Hughes asked professors and staff to reflect on the events of 9-11. Associate professor in physics, Theodore Korkovilos, professor of nursing, Allison Colbert, associate professor of pharmaceutical science, Carl Anderson, and more recount their memories about this tragic event that happened 23 years ago on Wednesday. In response, on campus, students took to the College Hall lawn and placed American flags into the grass to honor the victims and first responders who lost their lives on that fateful day. In Arts and Entertainment this week, layout editor Ember Duke wrote that the Bottle Rocket Social Hall in Allentown will be hosting an adult scholastic book fair on Saturday, September 14th. Three local bookstores and other vendors will be attending this event, along with readings by Rachel Ann Bovier, Jason Kieran, and Nick Roberts. The event will be in Bottle Rocket's warehouse behind the main building on Arlington Avenue from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. In sports, in sports, this week's staff writers, me, Mason Knoll, and Nicholas Fernbaugh, talked about the results for football, men's, and women's soccer. The Duquesne football team lost on the road to Boston College by a score of 56 to nothing as they played their last FBS, FBS opponent for the season. Quarterback Darius Parentes went 8 for 18 with two interceptions and a total of just 62 total yards. They looked to rebound as they played their third game in a row on the road against Youngstown State on Saturday as they looked for revenge after the Penguins beat the Dukes 40 to 7 in last year's FCS playoffs. For women's soccer, the Dukes continued their strong start to open the season as they defeated Kent State at home 4 to 2 on senior day. The team honored goalkeeper Maddie Noondorfer, midfielder Mackenzie Leader, and defender Ali Campanella as the three of them received flowers and cheers from the home crowd for the match. Brianna Moore scored two goals and Margie Brown tallied her seventh goal this season to give the Dukes a comfortable win against the Golden Flash. The Dukes would then follow up that victory with another road win, this time on the road. See me, also on the road against St. Francis with the final score being two to nothing. The goals were scored by Maya Matisa and Brown again in back-to-back -back games, giving her just eight, excuse me, giving her eight goals in just six games. That ties her for sixth most in a single season with Aaron McCain in 1995, Natalie Govich in 1997, and Audra Matthews in 2004. The women will look to keep up the good form as they finish non-conference play on Sunday with a matchup against Youngstown State. The men's team also kept their undefeated streak going to start the season. They won 1-0 against Niagara, and then they drew on the road against Notre Dame 1-1. Against Niagara, the game would be decided early as midfielder Ashton Gell scored his second goal of the season in just the third minute of the match as goalkeeper Zoltan Nagy made seven saves in the contest to secure a tight victory at home. They then took to South Bend, Indiana to take on the Fighting Irish as they faced an uphill battle facing the 23rd ranked team in the country and were outshot heavily 21-3 for the night as they went down in the 65th minute before getting a penalty, a penalty excuse me, late in the contest. Junior forward Dakota Yonke would tuck the goal away as Duquesne earned a hard-fought draw grabbing the attention across the country. The men will look to continue rolling as they stay on the road for the next two matches against Robert Morris and then George Washington to start a 10 play. Back to you, Sean, with opinions. Thank you, Jack. Lastly, in opinions this week, opinions editor Eliyahu Gasson wrote about the debate on Tuesday night. He broke down his thoughts on how this could affect the 2024 election coming up in early November. He discusses that Republican candidate Donald Trump failed to deliver, stating many wild claims ended up being fact-checked live by ABC during the debate. That's it for the Duke Weekly Roundup this week. From Sean McKean, Jack Morgan, goodbye.